All right, welcome back to Top 5. My special guests today are Frank Michael Smith and Doug Marland, a.k.a. Doug Mar. Uh, and today we are going to be drafting the Top 5 Pixar movies of all time. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, man, thank you. Austin, I'm ready to go, man. This is a nice little warm-up for my NFL fantasy drafts. I feel, <laughs> I feel good right here. I got my cheat sheet up. Let's do it. Yeah, if you can draft Pixar movies, you can draft the Unreal Fantasy football team. <laughs> it's definitely harder. I don't know which one's harder, this or drafting fantasy football. Oh, it's I this. Pixar, I have, Pixar I have movies more, might be harder. Yeah. yeah, I have much more experience doing a, a 12-man snake draft with, you know, running backs, wide receivers. This is totally different. <laughs> Um, all right, I guess we'll we'll let Doug take the choose what position he wants to draft for second or third since he came on he hopped on first and then uh, Frank will you pick after him? All right. I mean, I'll draft first. I don't know why I wouldn't pick first. You know. Yeah, Frank, do you want a uh, second or third? I'll go third. All right, good good choice. Second second is a little chaotic drafting there. Um, all right, Doug, what's your first overall pick? For a Pixar movie, I think my first overall pick has to be Toy Story. The original? Yeah, the original. All right, that's off the board. That's kind of tough. I feel like that's kind of early for a Pixar movie, though. Or for uh, for to take Toy Story as number one. You overall. think? I think I think uh, that just has the most nostalgia attached to it for me personally. But I think that's a lock to go number one. I was going to take it. You think it's a lock yeah. number? Oh, Toy Story is so far so far down my big board. I'm really? gonna go my oh big my board. God. All right. you're, not even, you're not even sweating right now that I just took Toy Story. No, I'm letting you have Toy Story. I think, I mean, I feel like Toy Story is obviously a classic, but I feel yeah. like it gets, I feel like it gets a little over, overranked. And you're not, you're not a fan of the Toy Story series at all? I mean, I'm a fan of Toy Story. I just feel like it's like maybe not number one overall in the grand scheme of Pixar movies. I mean, I don't hate it. It's a, cla a, great it's a classic. It's just for yeah. me, for me, like my number one overall that I'm taking right now is Inside Out. And it's no question. Inside Out, really? Yeah, Inside Out. I mean, not only do you have a great cast, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, the whole gang, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's honestly like the perfect movie. I think, I think I've seen that. Okay, I've seen Toy Story probably like, I don't know, over 10 times, but I've seen Inside Out once in theaters and I did cry at that one part a little bit. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Inside Out's like an emotional. But I that was that would not have even been close to my top five, probably. No, not not I wasn't gonna that's not on my board. Maybe it's just maybe it's just me. I feel like Toy Story <laughs> has I feel like Toy Story has more nostalgia, but Inside Out is just like Toy Story, you know, it's the original. You know, it's it's, yeah, it's the, the OG. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to hate on it, but it's it just wouldn't be my it wouldn't be my number one overall. That's all I'm saying. All right, I'm ready for my pick here. Yeah, let's see who you got, Frank. I'm I'm going with The Incredibles. Okay. That's um, that's a great pick. It's That's good. It's something I saw like I've probably only seen it one more time since 2004 and I still remembered what was going on. You know, like for me, I have I have a great sports memory. I can remember all these things, but when I go see a movie, it's almost like a good thing in a way where it's like, wow, you know, when you finish a TV show, you're like, I wish I could watch that again. Well, yeah. I can really do that like once. A <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, I, I really remember that one. It didn't fit that description. I just gave incredible. No pun intended. I mean, I, I definitely think incredible. Incredibles, I have top three on my big board. So I think that's an unbelievable pick. Also, just yeah. because. So iconic, not. Not many Pixar movies getting a second movie and Incredibles got a second movie for a good reason. Um, Even though it was like 20 years later, but The Incredibles is super <laughs> memorable. And I went, I barely ever go to the theaters. I went to the theaters for Incredibles too. So that, that should tell you something about my pick. I feel like that is, is that your second pick? No, it's no, I, <laughs> that's not my second pick. Uh, my second pick here is going to be Toy Story 2. Okay, that's fair. Do you I thought it would have. I can't. I couldn't let you get both. You know. I thought it would have been funny if I just did all the four Toy Stories for my first one. <laughs> but I'm not. I, I, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Now the, the rest of Toy Story is not on my board. I'm going to stop there. I think the first two were by far. The Toy best. Story two. I, I think Toy Story three is up there, but Toy Story two is solid. Do you think Toy Story one is better than Toy Story two, or Toy Story two is better than Toy Story one? I think one. I mean, I think one is a little bit better than two, but they're both 
they're both up there. I agree with you, but t- I will say they both have a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. A 100. Really? Yeah. There's something about bringing in the love interest for Woody in the second movie that just adds a whole nother layer to the second movie, though. I think I'd probably put like a slight edge on the first movie, but I don't know. The second movie is pretty close. I think I like the second movie, like when they're trying to cross the highway and stuff. Like there's a lot, like they're actually really out and about in the world and stuff, which is cool. I also just remember the uh, the guy that like kidnaps them in the chicken suit is yeah. very iconic from the second movie. And there's that one like ASMR scene everyone likes when he's like <laughs> polishing Woody in the second movie. I see yeah. that on Twitter a lot. Um, all right. My second movie, I'm going to have to, I'm just going to stick to my big board because I feel like if I don't stick to my big board, it's, I have a big board for a reason. Mel Kuyper's got a big board. I've got a big board. I'm going Finding Nemo. That was going to be my pick. <laughs> I mean, it's just like how if it's sitting there, how can I not take Finding Nemo? Talk about a heart, like heart grab, playing with my heartstrings there. And also just so iconic. So many one-liners from that. Yeah, that's one of my favorite Pixar movies. I'm surprised it actually lasted this long. I thought that might go in the top three. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised it did too. I'm... I almost, what's crazy is I almost had, I almost questioned my big board choice because it fell to the second round, I think. But never, I mean, just what? Never question the big board. Yeah, you can never question the big <laughs> board. Gotta, gotta trust the big board. But I mean, 332, Walby Way, Sydney, um, so many just iconic one liners in that. That's a very, yeah, I feel like the, out of the ones we picked so far, Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and Toy Story are like my three. So I don't know if they're my top three, but they're super memorable movies. I mean, I that also so popular, it defined a species of fish. When people see the clownfish now, they're like, oh, Finding Nemo. It's like <laughs> took over the whole fish. Very true. Also, just the, um, I love the beginning when they're like, oh, you're a clownfish. Tell us a joke. Come on. Come on. He's like, oh, no, I'm not a clownfish. And they're like, they like force him to tell him a joke and it's just not funny whatsoever (laughs) um also another one that was so iconic that i got a spinoff um but doug what's your what's your second overall pick here you really you made me bring up google because you took my pick but i'm gonna have to go with uh i'm gonna go with cars Mm. for the memes i mean I, i remember a decent amount of cars like the, the scene where they do the cow tipping is kind of funny. Um, I remember quite a bit of Cars, and I'll say this. If you've not been to Disneyland, not Disney World, in Los Angeles, the Cars ride there will make you like remember the whole movie. Like Everything was coming back to me. It's one of the more spectacular theme park rides I've ever been on in my life. It's so, so real. I don't know if really? you guys can. I think it begs the question, is the ride better than the movie? <laughs> yes yeah i think it was because there's there's not only the ride there's like a whole area of the theme park dedicated to the movie it makes you feel like you're in it like they have like the western style like uh like ranch town it's it's amazing um speak we were speaking of spinoffs earlier and movies that got a second or a third cars is one that should not have gotten a second or a third i feel like the first one was great but then I don't even think I saw the third. The I haven't seen the second or the third. Yeah, I, I stopped. The first was phenomenal, but nobody needed to make a Cars 2, and, or, and especially not a Cars 3. And then they made no. one about airplanes, and whoever did that really fumbled the bag because... <laughs> I didn't even not, know they made one about airplanes. Yeah, this we did not breaking need news a, to me. <laughs> we did not need a Cars about airplanes, but somebody made that, and I just think they should have made it. But the first one, definitely iconic. I said, I said it's a pretty good pick. You're definitely going for nostalgia so far, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the newer ones, Inside Out might have been the last Pixar movie I saw. I'm trying to remember if I've seen another newer one. Soul Cars came out pretty came... recently. That was oh, big I did, I did see that. That was yeah. actually, that was good. But um, is, Who's it, up is, it... My, is it back to me? No, no, Doug is going again. He's got back to back. I'm going to have to. I, I, I have my pick lined up already. I'm going to go have to go with Ratatouille. Oh, oh my no. God. 
I knew you know, somebody the mu- was going to do it. The musical just came out for TikTok. I have to ride for that a little bit. I think uh, that's one of the most movie picked, like the most talked about movies I've seen on um, just social media in general is Ratatouille, just because everyone thinks it's so funny. I feel like you're just going for the all meme draft at this point. Yeah, that might be. Toy Story. There's definitely so many Toy Story memes. I'm seeing those go around a lot with the uh, the NBA, the classic one of like. I don't want to play with you anymore. And he's like, oh, yeah. what he that, that, it's like that's a- LeBron to AD. And it's like, I don't want to play with you anymore or something <laughs> like that. Um, and he's trying to get Damian Lillard on his team or something. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. Ratat- Ratatouille is the all TikTok choice. Yeah, and I have to go with that. I got to be honest, though. I hate Ratatouille. I think it's the most, really? it's easily the most overrated oh. Pixar movie. Anybody who likes Ratatouille has never actually had to deal with a rat before. Oh, I, no. would be I, so, I would never want to deal with a rat. I would be so pissed if I found out that a rat was making my food. There's and- so many <laughs> too, when like the, the chandelier comes down or whatever that scene is, and you kind of see them all like in the ceiling. There's hundreds of them. Yeah, yeah. Ima- imagine you're I, out I would to be, dinner. I, I would be sick too. I can't even mind. The, the entire movie is just fantasy and I, I can't stand it. And it's not even a good fantasy like most movies are. It's just like, how, how did, imagine p- pitching that to Pixar and being like, okay, here's, so you guys made the movie about the toys. You made the movie about the fish. Hear me out, movie about a rat that cooks. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I, I, I actually want to use this against you here. I respect <laughs> the creativity here so much. It's so easy to make The Incredibles where it's like, Oh, what, what, we're going to do superpowers? That's a lock. Let's do that. But you're going to do Ratatouille. You're like, yeah, it's about a rat, an animal. Everyone. <laughs> Not only that, he has a refined palate and an itch to just cook French cuisine. Like, that's <laughs> incredible. The creativity there. And they pulled it off. But he's a rat. I can't, he's, he's a freaking rat. It's I can't stand it. I can't stand, I can't stand that you're, you're there's a rat out there. Are, are, you, are you mad that a rat is better at cooking than you? That could be it. Oh, I'm sure he's better at cooking than <laughs> me. I'm sure he's way better at cooking than me, but he's still a rat. He'll always be a rat. And that's, that's all he'll ever be. I've also had people tell me that that movie is like, like the message of the movie is, oh, anybody can cook. I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope you can cook. Like, any, yes, anybody can cook. So why I can cook that? cereal. I've I've met quite a few people that are they're like, nah, I can't cook. I'm like, really? really? Like you can't like crack it? Yeah, definitely. I've met people that are like, nah, I don't know how to cook anything. I'm like, you can't like put some butter in a pan and like crack a couple <laughs> eggs. Like you could do that, or just like throw some chicken on the pan and just yeah, watch it for yeah. a little bit and just flip <laughs> yeah. it over every Trust so me, often. There are people out there that don't believe they can do it. I know it sounds crazy. So maybe it's just that I know how to cook like chicken and spaghetti and like toast and well, just like follow it. Like I actually those I are like, like the normal things. Yeah, I like cooking. I, I'm a very I, I have Italian family and we we love doing that. Um, so I think I appreciated the movie just because I I actually like cooking. But uh, even just following a recipe, like sometimes I'll see those videos on Tasty where it's like, wow, like that looks so good. You click the link, the recipe is like seven <laughs> bullet points long. All you have to do is buy the ingredients and follow it like you're in fourth grade. You're just like following the instructions. It's really not that hard. That's crazy to me that there are people who can't just do that. It's actually, I feel like cooking is just a life skill. It's like- just I met a lot of people who shoes. can't do that. Really? Maybe well, Especially that's, in college. Maybe that's, that's why that it just never connected with me for Ratatouille is because I'm just like, I just feel like this is something that you should be able to do. Yeah, I think you need to come down from your cooking mountaintop, Austin. <laughs> yeah, get off my high horse and, <laughs> and have some compassion for And Ratatouille. then just enjoy this meal that this rat makes you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that I'm going to get roasted for not being, I mean, it's a fine movie. It's a good movie, but I just think there are people out there like that is the best. Oh, uh, my that. brother, for example, has a Ratatouille poster. He would have taken it first overall. Yeah, there are definitely people who are like Ratatouille is the best Pixar movie, hands down. For sure. Including, by the looks of it, the majority of TikTok. So I'm <laughs> sure I'm going to get absolutely roasted for this pick. But I just think that people who are like Ratatouille is the best movie ever have never dealt with a rat before. I had a rat in my apartment at one point, and I was just like, 
I, it's awful. It's the you, worst you, thing going ever. Going back to this point, though, you can't just say they've never dealt with a rat. This is not just a rat. This is a, this is yeah, a different the, breed of rat. This the rat a, in your apartment couldn't cook. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He did. He did steal some of my food, though. He did. So, so maybe, maybe he, he was, was trying so to maybe, cook. <laughs> maybe you just needed to spy on him a little bit. Maybe he was just gathering a recipe. In college, it might not be that bad if you just have a rat in your crib cooking for you. Maybe I just needed to grab him and just like take my hat off and put or, it. Or maybe just <laughs> like buy like buy the ingredients and kind of like leave them out like on the ground, like <laughs> act like you like forgot to pick them up and, and see if he takes them. Get all of the ingredients for ratatouille. Just kind of put them out yes. there and see if he actually puts it all see together. <laughs> exactly. Maybe I just should have like thrown him under my hat and then I would have became a world class chef. My girlfriend would have been like, "What? Like, how'd you get?" You could barely cook toast like the other day. Like, how'd you get so good cooking? I'm like, I don't. I'm like, I don't know. He's like <laughs> grabbing all the pots and pans for me. The missed opportunity. Sure. That was probably. I probably went on a little bit too much variety <laughs> there, but. Um, so my next pick is up. Um, honestly, the way my my draft is panning out is I'm taking all of the. It's just it's just the way the the, the big board's falling to me, but I'm taking all of the hard strings here. Up just throws you for an absolute loop right off the bat. Yeah, being that's like, true. You're not expecting that at all. Finding no. Nemo definitely throws you for a loop right off the bat too. But it's, I feel like Pixar movies in terms of just like making you cry five minutes into the movie, Up takes the cake without a doubt. You're picking all of the movies where somebody dies, I think. <laughs> <laughs> What is up with that in Pixar movies? <laughs> I feel like half of them, like for for a kids movie, get very very intense. Very yeah, I feel quickly. like Up was crazy. When when did what year did Up come out? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I feel like say. I was. It was two thousand nine. Okay, so I was like. I feel like I was too young to experience that, but I was like twelve. I think the beginning was sad. Yeah, I, that was right. Right now, that was two years before high school. I was a I was a freshman in high school in 2009, and I can tell you I, I was not very excited for Up. It didn't really appeal to me. <laughs> didn't do it for you. Didn't do it for me. The talking, I liked the movie, but I was I wasn't like pumped to see it. The talking dog didn't didn't do it for you. No, it just wasn't doing it for me. That makes sense, but I, I did know, like just... the concept of like all the balloons. Though I was like, wow, like I was like in my house, like would that would that work? <laughs> You're like. Like, how many balloons would I need to make that? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's kind of piquing my interest there. <laughs> Elon I like to Musk is like putting all this thought into building a spaceship, and you're just like, "Have you tried balloons, buddy?" <laughs> <laughs> and then David like Blaine did it. Oh, that is oh, yeah, true. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. He basically just he probably just watched the movie and was like, "Oh, I'll just do it." Yeah, I mean that that's probably not too far fetched. I mean, he up inspired a generation here. Did he just inspire, did Up just inspire David Blaine to fly into the sky with a balloon? I watched that whole David Blaine thing live on YouTube. It was intense at the end. Like that was actually a pretty cool stunt. Did you think he like wasn't going to like make it? It was dicey at a couple points. Like he was losing connection. Like his breathing wasn't exactly right. Like he couldn't find a landing zone. He's, in, he's insane for doing that kind of stuff. I would never be able to do that. I didn't watch it live. I just saw the highlights after. So I didn't, I don't think I got the full experience as if I watched it live. But with any of those things, there's always that moment of like, is this guy actually going to, is this guy going to make it? It was really the landing spot. Like it was, it didn't seem like there was going to be a place for him to land. Cause you can't come down like, you know, you don't come down at like one mile an hour. You're kind of like zooming in. Yeah. Especially losing connection too. I'd be, I'd be so worried. And if you didn't have like a Boy Scout and a talking dog to lead you through all of that. I know. I know. <laughs> he, he did the much more raw version. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, up as a whole, the message of like true love and carrying out this thing that he had planned with his wife for his whole life and going through with it. Something bowed up for me. I don't know. But I liked it because the dog had the same name as me, but then I realized they're not spelled the same. So <laughs> are you ever just like squirrel? Not, not recently. 
<laughs> um, all right, Frank, who, who's your next pick? Um, up was actually uh, third on my big board there. Yeah. I have two nice picks for you guys. First, I'm going to go with Bugs Life. Going way back. We're going to go 1998. Such, uh, a good, such a good pick. That's a good pick, yeah. When we're I, talking like nostalgia, I think that's the ultimate nostalgia pick right there. I, it's one of the first movies I really remember watching. I mean, it's, yeah. I was only four years old and I remember I had it on VHS, like it had a cool cover and like, you know, back in the days of VHS, like you watched a movie a bunch of times. It wasn't just like, oh, like let's find something else in the streaming library here. Like, no. So like, true. Kids these days will never understand that. I had like five movie movies. A lot of times. Yeah, you had like five movies that you watched like, 50 times I, yeah year. i think i watched the lion king every day <laughs> yeah. like, i remember even like bringing you on vacation like i'm from pittsburgh we go to the jersey shore south jersey not like the show and <laughs> it's very very calm and i remember like bringing it on vacation with me being like oh they have a vhs player at the beach house like let me bring bugs life so yeah <laughs> that's a staple for me man so i got to go with my staple there bugs life and i'm also going to go with monsters oh mm. You had you killed Thank both those picks this late in the draft too. I think those yeah, are I'm both sorry. those are both nostalgia picks because I think that at some point with Pixar, like obviously I took Inside Out number one, which is a newer one, and it still hit for me. But something about being young and watching them all the time, like made just, for kids. your connection with it is just a little bit different. I feel like yeah, yeah, for sure. Mon I, Monsters, I remember thinking was like again, like really creative, like yeah. the whole concept of like, like them getting like scores and rated. Like I thought was really cool. Like I, I love that about sports that we can actually keep track of these things where it's like, oh, you, you did lead the league in batting average. Like we know exactly what's up. So when they were like scaring kids and they'd be like, oh, like you're doing pretty well this week. Like I thought that was hilarious. I guess it begs the question is solely the goat. He's probably the goat, right? I think he's probably the goat. Yeah. The yeah. only other guy who would come close would be the, oh, I forget his name, like the wizard guy. The salamander. Uh, yeah. Is he yeah. salamander? He, he's, is he, he's freaky looking. That's his rival in the in the beginning of the whole movie. But but he kind of smokes him by the end of it. So I feel like it's undisputed. Sully is the goat of scaring kids. But then by the end of the movie, he's friends with kids. So maybe he's not the goat anymore. Maybe he's not the goat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I, I did I did see uh, Monsters University as well, uh -huh. uh, but I, I think I fell asleep. Didn't do. I it. don't remember any of that movie. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I think I also saw it, but maybe didn't. Maybe saw it on TV and only caught clips of it, and it wasn't. It just wasn't doing it for me. But Monsters yeah. Inc. is an all time movie. I also remember just as a kid being really scared at certain points, and a big part of that was just the salamander guy. That guy was the worst. He's creepy looking. There's no doubt about it. He's like slimy and I, I don't know. I, I, I see him a lot on Twitter because people are like, oh, you're built like the salamander guy to certain people. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to see that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of who his like sports comp would be. He's almost like um, uh, Isaiah Thomas or something. Like nobody, nobody seems to like that guy. Even though he's that good, <laughs> I thought I thought you were gonna go with the like the current Isaiah Thomas. House. Oh no no no! Everybody well, loves I'm like, I'm really like he's like he's real short. I'm like trying to picture how this one's gonna work. Yeah, everybody no. loves Celtics Isaiah Thomas, but Pistons it's Isaiah Thomas is the Salamander guy. Uh, salamander is he Salamander? Is his name maybe he's a Sal Salamander? Yeah. Um, salamander guy from Monsters Inc. is just Isaiah Thomas. Nobody likes him. If they did it, could, dream he, be, could team, he be Trevor Bauer? I like Trevor Bauer a lot. Yeah, I, also I like. I think. I think. But too. see, I like Trevor Bauer because he's super funny. But a lot of people don't like him, well, especially now. But yeah, yeah. Salamander guy wasn't funny though. Salamander guy was okay, just okay. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. Isaiah Thomas isn't funny. I don't. I don't think he intends to be funny. I think he's <laughs> funny because he doesn't realize that literally everybody hates him, and that's why he was left off the dream team. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a good comp. I think if they did a uh, dream team of scaring kids from Monsters, Inc., 
the salamander guy, even though he's he's maybe the second best, he's getting left off the dream team just because he can't he can't play nice with others. No, you can't mash. He's he's uncoachable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's he he's probably not going to show up to mini camp like <laughs> bad for he's, the team. He's going to get into a fight with Sully and uh, and Mike Wazowski. He's not in the weight room every day. Yeah, he's not in the weight room every day. You can tell he's not in the weight room every day. But supremely talented, which is why I say Thomas works. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the comp. Um, I also love your Bugs Life pick as well because pretty much nostalgia but i also rewatched it fairly recently and it's it's that it's that good but it's also just the it's the classic story of the underdogs beating you know the the dynasty or you know the underdogs rising up it's the classic david versus goliath except it's bugs so it's better yeah that works that that storyline's undefeated yeah it really is undefeated all right, so uh, this is tough for what do I take next? I'm taking Wally. I'm taking Wally off the board. Um, it's honestly iconic. Just the message after that of just saving the earth, um, which we should do. That is a good um, message. Yeah, good message, save the earth. But also... I don't know. I just think I just think Wally's that good. Um, I, something um, I didn't like about it. I just didn't like like the the way they displayed people. Like something about that made me feel weird. Just because they were all uh, in obese, like obese super and, obese, and yeah. not uh, not walking anymore, not capable of chairs. doing anything. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's. I have to confess to never seeing Wally. But this doesn't sound so good. You guys, are- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm definitely not selling my pick. Basically, Wally is this robot who's left on Earth after humans have left. Humans have left Earth because Earth is basically just a trash pit now because it's like we can't live on Earth anymore. So humans go off in this spaceship. Meanwhile, Wally the robot, his entire job is cleaning he's a cleaning robot so he is single-handedly cleaning up earth until he gets to go back he uh i'm blanking on exactly how he ends up on the spaceship but basically wally ends up on the spaceship he goes with the other robot doesn't he yeah because of eve but i don't remember exactly how they how they get there but eve is this other robot that he falls in love with and then Wally's whole life on Earth, he's cleaning Earth, and Wally's very nostalgic. Wally's got like a little record player going, playing you know old classics. He's got like old TV shows playing, and Wally goes up to the spaceship, saves humanity. Humanity is basically living in like a false paradise where they're just being taken care of by humans, but then, um trying to basically they're being taken care of by humans they think they're in this paradise or humans are being taken care of by robots they think they're in paradise really they're not because to doug's point they've gotten lazy obese they're just flying around in like these wheelchair things wally brings them back to earth and they plant this seed for a tree and it's basically like you know we're gonna we're gonna go back to you know being humans on earth basically and that's basically wally okay so now you don't have to now you don't have to watch it yeah <laughs> that was a great synopsis and i it's it's one of the best uh pixar movies i think but uh doug last two picks coming up here what are you taking i think a lot of the good picks have just been completely wiped off the board yeah but i am going to pick toy story 3 for my next pick because i i saw that in the theaters and i thought like at the like this when Buzz Lightyear turned to like Spanish, that I thought that was like a funny bit. Yeah. And then at the end, when you think they're all gonna die, like that was very. I feel like that was an emotional moment because you actually, I actually did think like I was like, oh, this is gonna be the last Toy Story, but um, then they got saved and everything. Obviously, there's a Toy Story four, but <laughs> I thought it was a touching movie. I think that 
I refuse to see Toy Story 4 because I just feel like Toy Story 3 was the perfect way to end it. It, it was it's a, a trilogy. I, thought, I don't know. Toy Story I don't, 4 was good, though. I can't yeah, even Yeah, I was going to say, I, did, I never saw 4. Did it, was it a hit or no? I think it was a hit. Is it worth They They, they did some different stuff. Yeah, I think it's worth seeing. Hmm. But it I is, uh, like got a lot of Pixar movies to watch when we get done. <laughs> I just gonna, feel like uh, like Toy Story three was where they should have ended it, though. It, it would have been a, a fine ending, yeah. But I don't think like it's not one of like Toy Story four is not one of those like Cars sequels where you're like, oh, I'm mad they made this. It's like, oh, this is like a good movie, you know? Okay, so maybe they didn't ruin. I was worried that they were going to ruin it because yeah, like, no, guys I, nailed it three times why risk it you know why risk going for four but i guess if you're that good you keep I, it going I think toy story four might have set up toy story five too so i think they're gonna keep going they're just gonna keep cranking them out i think every, maybe every like, 10 years maybe <laughs> just eventually toy story 12 13 14 <laughs> just keep we might going. be dead for those ones but yes yeah, we'll come out eventually. <laughs> but toy story three i think is a fair pick it's also on my big board especially this late in the draft. I think it's a good choice. And then I have to do my last pick. Yeah. I think I have to go with soul. Oh, I mean, I don't, man. there's no other ones I would pick over that. Um, I did watch that on Disney plus recently and I thought it was a really good movie. I was actually invested in it. I forgot. I have watched a Pixar movie recently. I totally forgot. So was I'm a Pixar really, movie. Oh, really I'm, jealous of that pick. I'm very interested in that pick because my next, I, I won't reveal my next pick just yet. We'll yeah. stay on soul. I might, I might take it if you reveal it. Just out of spite. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't trust. So um, I was going to say, if no one took soul, I was going to ask for your opinions on soul because that out of all the ones I haven't seen is the one I'm most interested in seeing. I love Jamie Foxx. Can I get like a quick sell? Yeah, I don't want to give anything up, but I had it in my top five overall on my big board and the only reason i didn't take it is because i thought i could outsmart you guys and get it with my last pick because you guys said you hadn't seen any recent pixar movies i and totally then, i am i might have i might have tricked you maybe i lied about not seeing yeah maybe you're just playing movies. maybe you're just playing head games with me <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's that good I, it is a really good movie yeah i left it and was just like wow soul is that good and jamie fox obviously kills it tina fey kills it and i'd say it's probably the best pixar movie i've seen since inside out, inside out yeah, yeah since probably. inside out since my first overall pick um, so i was looking at the movies the pixar movies from like from inside out onwards and i don't think i've seen any of them like i saw finding dory in the background one time i've never seen the good dinosaur or coco coco or i haven't seen but it's supposed to be really really good is it but i haven't seen it um the incredibles 2 i think is the only other movie since inside out besides soul that pixar's put out that's like really good coco's very highly ranked on this uh list i have here everybody yeah. keeps telling me to watch it probably should have watched it before this but it's supposed to be that good yeah. maybe you just maybe you just trust rotten tomatoes and take that as your pick but Damn, I'm really jealous. I don't want to ruin it. I'm really jealous that you took Soul because I really thought that it was just going to fall to me right there. But um, Frank, if you can't tell by how mad I am that Doug took Soul, <laughs> it is it is 100% worth seeing. Um, yeah, I would watch it today, maybe. Yeah. After I, probably, the I, might even, I might even watch it. I might watch it before the finals. <laughs> just a <as, laughs> little pregame until yeah. I get going. <laughs> If you want to just like play with your heartstrings a little bit, but also like just feel good about things. Soul. Soul is that good. Uh, so my last pick here, um, I'm taking Incredibles 2. I think that it is, it was that good. Um, it might even be better than the first one. I think that... Uh -oh. I think I'm, that I would put it over the first, I would put, I would, I would give the first one a slight edge, but I think for me, that's just because I have that like nostalgia and that childhood connection. And we were talking before about like movies that we had on VHS or DVD. 
I had The Incredibles on DVD and I've seen it like a thousand times. So I think that's part of why I give Incredibles the edge. But I think that if I hadn't seen Incredibles one a million times, I might put Incredibles two over Incredibles one. Might be a hot take, probably is a hot take, but I think that I think that they're close. I, I think, think that just getting more out of Jack Jack in the second one really is what really is what gives it a lot of help. I thought it was a bit strange that like before it came out, huge buzz for Incredibles too. I don't yeah. remember a Pixar movie having that much buzz, like ever actually. And, I agree. Um, they're like, yeah, like it's it's coming so late because the animations took like over ten years to make. And I was yeah. like, wow, like you know they're really good always, but I'm really expecting a lot here. And I don't I don't think they underperformed. I like Incredibles too. But I was just like, man, I feel like this should have come out like six years ago. Yeah. Well, that's the thing with Incredibles 1 is it ended and it just set up Incredibles 2. And then I I, I always thought as a kid that it was going to come out in a couple I of years. Thought, I thought I was, a, I, was I, I think I always asked my parents when it was coming out and obviously they, <laughs> they had no idea. <laughs> they weren't locked it was, in. <laughs> it, it, was, it was such a cliffhanger. You're like, oh, they're setting up the, the next movie. Yeah, the underminer. Like, and I feel like that was a, actually a constant question for me growing up was when Incredibles 2 was going to come out. And I think my parents were also just like, I, I don't care. Like, I don't <laughs> come out eventually. <laughs> like, stop asking. Me. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why they waited so long because I feel like at that point, the kids who went to go see Incredibles 2 weren't like Incredibles 1 yeah. fans. How long did they wait? Did they they waited at least ten there years? Was two, Incredibles was came out in 04. Incredibles two came out in hold on, I just passed it. Twenty eighteen. So they waited fourteen years. That's crazy. That's so. I mean, the only sequel that's taken that long in terms of kids' movies is Space Jam. I think it's not and even it, a sequel. Yeah, it's really not even a sequel. It begs the question: Did we need a second Space Jam? I well, I'll say this. I, I just watched the original Space Jam in preparation yesterday. Yep. It's funny you bring up Space Jam. I don't. They're not going to top the original one. There's no something way, else, right? There's no way. There's just no way that movie's perfect, and it's only an hour and a half. It's an hour and a half with a ten minute intro. If yeah. ever forget, I certainly forgot how long the intro is. No one would ever do this in a movie in 2021. I'm not joking. It's five minutes long. Wait, the intro is just him shooting hoop, MJ shooting hoops with it's his a dad. Full right? credit, a full credits where it's like MJ just like dunking on people and his prime is a bull. Oh, and, you're and right, you're welcome right. to the jam. You know the whole song. Yeah. They play the whole song. There's you, there's no way they do that with LeBron. That's my game, only right? critique with the original Space Jam. It's not going to be talked. You, wait, you don't like that at the beginning? I kind of love just like a highlight no, tape to start the movie. Trust, <laughs> trust me, when you go back and watch it, you'll be like, yeah, Frank was right. This is like a two minute <laughs> Um, But I just, it, the other thing too is Bill Murray is in it. And so is um, the the uh, the mailman from Seinfeld. Uh, Newman. Stan Odalak is his name in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> Newman. Yeah. There's no way that, like LeBron's bringing in somebody as iconic as Bill Murray or Newman from Seinfeld. I didn't see it. Even I didn't think he was bringing in anyone. I mean, as far as I like, know, he's not. They're, they're playing like real basketball like players this time, though. Yeah. Well, they did in the first one too. Is Chuck and in the uh, first one they're they're like they vaguely remember the mo- resemble the Monstars. Like there's a small one that's like clearly Muggsy Bogues, and there's one yeah. that has flat top it's supposed to be Patrick Ewing but you can't really tell yeah like this one you can clearly tell it's like Anthony Davis yeah I don't know we're gonna see I just feel like maybe like when does it come out this is it this month they just had a promo event I I, I imagine it's soon because I just LeBron feel like James- it's uh it's gonna be like maybe LeBron's whole career you know really really good but just a little bit not quite as good as MJ <laughs> that's actually hilarious um that's funny that he's setting himself up for that like yeah he, he didn't have to do this he didn't uh, have to do it but he did it to himself like 
his whole career, he's been compared to MJ. Oh my God, you're and so right. He's forcing it upon himself to be compared to MJ again. And even if it's even if it's really really good, it's just another thing that people are gonna say. Oh, MJ man. just did it a little bit better. That's actually, that's actually about to be a hilarious conversation really soon. Um, I don't know why they're, nobody's talking they're, about. They're gonna it. put Everybody that just, into the. They're going to put okay. that into the stats, too. It's like not when like they're comparing Jordan. them. <laughs> yeah, right? Like when you do the resume. Yeah. I did actually see that somebody put out a, uh, the stats for Jordan in, uh, in that game. So I wonder, if, I wonder if that's maybe LeBron's people putting that out there. And then when the new one drops, they're going to put out LeBron's stats, and they're just going to be like a little bit better than MJ's. <laughs> Jordan doesn't miss in that whole game. He, yeah, he doesn't. I think he actually, I think that's part of the stats is he went like a thousand, he shot a thousand percent. Actually, I don't think LeBron misses, I mean, Jordan misses a shot in the whole movie for that matter. Most of them are dunks, but um, it's not like he's some phenomenal actor. Like his acting skills like are very, very subpar in the whole movie. Yeah. Not that we were <laughs> anything more than that. But LeBron, like I saw Trainwreck, it was pretty good. LeBron, I think LeBron good might be a, a better actor than Michael Jordan. Definitely, like he, there is a chance. I'm not ready to write him off just yet. The movie hasn't come out yet, but <laughs> I'm not either. Maybe, maybe when things are all said and done, we'll be like, okay, Jordan had six rings. LeBron never. Got, maybe LeBron does get six, but Jordan has six rings. LeBron doesn't have quite as many. We'll give Jordan's the better basketball player, but. LeBron, way better actor. And LeBron's about to get a Fortnite skin. Does Michael Jordan have a Fortnite skin? Wow. <laughs> Game changer. These are the discussions that people need to be having <laughs> that nobody's having. <laughs> All right, Frank, last pick. Who are you taking? I'm not happy about it. I, I feel like I'm going to play soul here in, into my five spot. Like I, Maybe I wouldn't take it. I don't know. Okay, it's off the board now. What I was going to say is, if Soul didn't get taken, I was saying, you know, maybe I'll take this without even seeing it. But <laughs> um, it would have been a really good take, like really good. Yeah, I feel I feel, well, I feel much more comfortable doing it now, but it's already gone. Yeah, uh, I'm going with Finding Dory, which is something I'm not that proud of. No, I actually think you should be proud of that pick for for last pick in the draft for uh, Mr. Irrelevant pick. Yeah. Um, Dory's on my big board. I thought there was a chance that. Dory didn't get picked. And I think it's, I think it's good. It's, it's definitely no question, not as good as finding Nemo, but it is really good, especially for Mr. Irrelevant pick. Yeah. I will say, I, I mean, I've never even thought about rewatching it. It's a one and done. Yeah, uh, I agree. But I enjoyed it while I watched it. Finding, they basically just took the premise of finding Nemo. They said, let's do this exact movie with the exact same people, except they're just finding a different character. Yeah, it's a typical studio moneymaker. They're like, what's going to make us some money this year? Like, <laughs> we'll double up on the franchise. We'll just change one word in the title. Done. Yeah. Sold. <laughs> hey, hey, Ellen, you in? Yep. Okay, <laughs> cash the yeah. check. Um, yeah, it's it's a good it's last a good, pick. It's I a think. good last pick, yeah. yeah. I'm and also a many... fan of Ellen. I have, to re I have to respect my girl Ellen here. I know she's been getting a lot of hate. I went on the Ellen show... And she gave, like, it was one of those shows where she gives away tons of prizes, like, greatest night of giveaways. No way. I got to be in that. And, like, they gave, like, her and Jennifer Aniston just gave away all this stuff. Like, so. Yeah, Ellen, you know, that is something so I, about I know Ellen. a lot of people hate you, Ellen, but I don't. I love you. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Ellen, Ellen gets I, enough credit. Somebody give, I, thank you. Thank you. Frank. I would like, I would like Ellen a, a lot more if she gave me some free stuff as well. Yeah. That's fair, right? <laughs> for as much but i don't get how she gets so much slander nobody can be hated that much who gives away that much free stuff well anyone who's been in those audiences is not spreading this hate because i'll tell you this i've experienced some serious moments of uh hysteria in my life you know santonio holmes catching the super bowl winning touchdown comes to mind especially after going down in that game, a game that it looked like the Steelers were definitely going to win, you know, being in Pittsburgh, watching this game as a kid, mm -hmm. that catch is incredible. Like I've never seen more people around me more excited until I went to Ellen and it dwarfed it. <laughs> so you're and saying, you're saying Ellen giving away free stuff 
to the people in the audience was like a crazier phenomenon than one of the greatest plays. Austin, in Super I'm telling Street. you, it wasn't close. It was That's not insane. close. I'm telling you, because the way she set it up was she tricked everyone. She said, you know, you can come to the show today, but this is going to be a one woman play. It's not going to be like my other shows. And everyone's like, all right, cool. I don't uh, care. Oh, yeah. Everyone's like, so what? It's Ellen. I'm so she in. comes out of the curtain and she's like, are you guys so excited to see my one woman play? Everyone's like, yeah, we're excited. Yeah. And then she's like, well, it's not happening. Tonight's the greatest night of giveaways. <laughs> and they no way. Her back and it's the whole set and it's like the Christmas theme and everything. And uh, I'm telling, there are so many people crying. I don't watch the Ellen show. I went with my girlfriend at the time and uh, I was just like, wow. Like, I mean, like we're gonna get like maybe a gift card. Like this seems cool. I didn't know we were gonna get that much stuff. But other people did know, bawling their eyes out to the point where they had to have ushers <laughs> come up the aisle with like they had they had, um, you know, like Kleenex ready to go. They knew oh like they knew that Ellen was going to bring the waterworks. Ellen is like it almost sounds like she's bigger than the Pope. Like how oh do God. like she is that big? I'm excited myself just right now hearing you talk about it has me <laughs> super hyped up it I'm, I'm telling you i will i don't think i'll ever experience a moment of hysteria like that ever again it was awesome and and i'm telling you it didn't just happen once on the original then she was like and jennifer aniston's here and i was like yeah, ah! right. it happened all over again <laughs> I was like, friends, I want friends, woo, free stuff. <laughs> and then at the, she had several gifts, but I'll, I'll cut the story here. I know this is not what this is about, but. No, 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 um, actually, I, I'm loving every moment of this. <laughs> her final <clears throat> gift, they'd given us luggage, which yep. is great. It's high quality luggage, you know, that's cool. We get a suitcase. Yeah. Then Jennifer Anderson's like, well, Ellen, where are they going to go with that suitcase? They got to use it. <gasps> I was like, oh my God, we gotta get it. we're going to get a trip. She's like, let's, you're all going to Abu Dhabi. Okay. <laughs> had like the, the ushers came out with like the Arab outfits on, like they were all ready to be on like the UAE uh, Emirate Airlines. And they like gave you out like fake tickets. And they're like, you got a hotel, you're going to Ferrari world. And then COVID happened. I never got to go on the trip. Uh, <laughs> do they but owe you a trip then? Know. Does Ellen owe you a trip? Ellen, Ellen owes me a trip. Well, technically the UAE owes me a trip. I don't <laughs> Yeah. I love that story. I think I'm hopping on the campaign right now of stop the Ellen slander. Oh, please. You're fully convinced me. Go, going on Ellen could be a full-time job. If you just go on every show, you just get a bunch of free stuff. It's also yeah. free to on, that you don't have to pay at all. You could probably make like a six-figure salary just getting getting stuff off of Ellen and, and selling it. Or I got it. a full, uh, I got a full workout machine called the Hydro. It's one of those like rowing machines. Yeah. But it, but it's, do you know what it is? It's kind of like the, uh, what's that bike everyone uses? Uh, the elliptical, the panel, the panel, uh, whatever it is, the Peloton. 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 It's a Peloton, but for rowing. Yeah. It's like a thousand dollar machine. I sold it on eBay immediately. <laughs> 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 That's awesome though. I'm full on like Ellen support support team right now after that i don't i just can't can't understand how you could hate somebody who gives away that much free stuff and brings that much joy to people's lives they just haven't been on the show or they haven't heard my story i think that's yeah. the, <laughs> team the ellen the difference <laughs> unreal um so let's run over our picks real quick um doug do you want to go over your picks first yeah so so first from um from my memory if i can remember correctly i picked toy story Cars, Ratatouille, Toy Story three, and then Soul. Okay, yeah, that is. So I, I, think I think I have a is, solid lineup. I think that is correct. I think those are your picks. Um, I'm just remembering my picks now. I'm writing them down so I don't forget. Okay, so mine are Inside Out, Finding Nemo, Up, Wally, and Incredibles two. I'm feeling very confident. I'm feeling more confident about my Finding Nemo pick after finding uh, out about Frank's story. I'm just so pumped that Ellen is like on my team now. Me too. I'm I'm pumped for her <laughs> and you. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Frank. <laughs> I have uh, I have Toy Story two. I have um, The Incredibles, uh, Monsters, Bug Life. And finding Dory. 
I think these are all pretty even teams, if I'm being pretty honest. There's I've in my other episodes, I've had like a clear winner. I think this might be the first one that's like highly contentious as to who's gonna win it all. Um and before you guys go, is there anybody are there any movies that you like if there was another round you would have taken that got left off, like honorable mentions? Yeah, um, we'll watch the, the one we talked about, Coco. I want to watch that. Yeah, me too. I, I kind of want. I want to see Coco, and I kind of want to see Luca. That's the newest one. Yeah, I also want to see. I also want to see Luca. It's also highly ranked on Rotten Tomatoes. I had Coco and Luca on my big board, just as if I ran out of picks, I was gonna do what Frank was thinking with Soul and just be like, they gotta be good movies, right? I can just there's one them. called onward too i've never heard of and then i've never seen the good dinosaur but i said that already but i don't know if people like the good dinosaur like that i, I feel I like we would have heard dinosaur, about it but i will say that title makes it sound like all dinosaurs are bad and there's just one good one which i don't i already don't like the premise yeah i agree with you how come they're how come all dinosaurs aren't friendly you don't like, know that like, why couldn't it be 50 50. yeah how yeah. many dinosaurs have you met don't tell me yeah. they're, don't tell me they're all bad they could have been good people Good, Not honest, hardworking favorite. people, just like you and Most me. Most dinosaurs do community service. Yeah. As yeah. far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> they're, just, they're just trying to raise a family. You don't know <laughs> what they do on the weekends. They've got great community outreach. Enough with the, enough with the Ellen slander, enough with the bad dinosaur slander. Yeah. Um, but I'm thank awesome. you very much to both of you guys for coming on. Um, make sure you follow both of their channels. I will be linking both of their channels on this. Is there anything you guys want to shout out while I've got you on? I'm, I'm Doug Marr on, I mean, I, I you only really use TikTok and YouTube. So check me out on there. Yeah, I want to give a quick shout out to my YouTube channel, Frank Michael Smith. I'm going to be hosting a live show starting really soon. We're going to have people on, audience members on, guests on. Um, so not out yet, but keep your eyes out for that. And if you want some stories in the meantime, check me out on there. Awesome. And I want to thank both of you guys for coming on. I also want to hype both of you guys up a little bit. Um, these are two of my favorite creators on social media. Um, Doug is hilarious and Frank kills it, bringing the best stories in sports um, in under 60 seconds, which is incredible. Um, so I know that, you know, Frank's live show is going to be incredible and Doug's always putting out hilarious content. So make sure you follow both of them. If you watched all the way through, you obviously know that they are hilarious. So um, their content kind of speaks for itself. So thank you to both of you guys for coming on. And until next time. Austin, thank you, man. Thank you for having us.